What is gunfighting, really? We're going to explore some semantics about this word and see how words can hurt you. Riley Schrader here with Defensive Firearms Instruction. I'm a retired cop and personal firearms trainer. I help new and veteran shooters get or improve their defensive shooting skills by teaching the art, science, and laws of self-defense. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the laws of self-defense and how certain words can hurt you, at least in the courtroom. But first, a quick technical dry definition. A fight is in a violent struggle involving the exchange of physical blows or the use of weapons. The descriptive word in gunfight is gun. And now the semantics. For our purposes here and for your legal purposes, you should not be involved in a gunfight. You should not be involved in any manner of fight for that matter, certainly if you have any hope of legally claiming self-defense. However, you very well may be involved in a defensive use of force that just so happened to involve your use of a firearm or other defensive tool. Did you notice how I didn't use the word fight in this description? If I sound like I'm beginning to split hairs, I certainly am, because I want you to understand that's what a prosecuting attorney is going to do to you if you start talking or writing about your gunfighting skills. Remember the, de the definition of fighting that I recited above? Fighting implies a mutual agreement to engage in a violent struggle or mutual combat. Technically, mutual combat with arms would be considered a duel. In the legal world, the one in which you'll have to explain your actions to people who weren't present at your defensive use of force, any reference to the word fight will likely torpedo your chance of legal self-defense. Why? Because legally, fighting is not self-defense. Fighting is a mutually agreed upon violent struggle. From a legal perspective, self-defense is one's actions taken in response to another's violent criminal actions upon that person. Take a look at my videos in the Elements of Self-Defense for more information on this legal concept. Will you be actively engaging in combatives against an attacking opponent? Most certainly. My caution to you is to avoid using the word fight in any statements related to your defensive use of force. Why does it matter? Because an unscrupulous prosecutor will, in fact, use every means available to convince a jury that your use of force was criminal, distorting and misrepresenting your words, writings, statements, and actions to increase his conviction rate is simply how they roll. Don't hand them ammunition to convict you. Now the myths. The term gunfighting has been romanticized in Hollywood scripts to portray two characters engaged in trading an amount of gunfire with each other. How the script ends depends on who's writing it. Recently, war fighters and police officers are characterized as being involved in gunfights in the course of their duties, and to a degree this may be arguably accurate. However, and especially in the real world, these situations are usually unexpected, not romantic at all, and exceptionally violent and chaotic. What is not a myth is that whenever you engage in a violent struggle with another person, regardless of the presence or absence of tools like guns or knives, the risk of injury to you will always be greater than zero. There is an abundance of reference material available to you on the finer points of the term combat and what it means. One source, Colonel David Grossman's excellent book entitled On Combat, is a detailed study of the psychological and physiological aspects and effects upon the human body and the mind. You may consider it as required reading. I highly recommend it. The term fighting is often used in the title of both unarmed and armed courses of defensive instruction. 
Try not to use that term in your own description of your defensive skills that you may have acquired or are studying. Don't give the prosecutor ammunition to use against you. Take a look at the other videos in my channel to get a better perspective of the many components of the larger self-defense puzzle, as well as some good foundations on basic defensive firearms operation. Remember, these are just videos and you need to get out there and experience some practical and difficult training. Please click the like and subscribe buttons as well as the notification button to stay updated on DFI videos as they are published. Share this video with people in your, in your tribe and help educate them too. Visit DFISOCAL.com to find out when and where the next self-defense law class will be scheduled in the Southern California area. Or contact me for a presentation to your group. And take a look at my IG channel to see what I'm currently working on. The links are in the description. To schedule your personal firearms training session or to develop an ongoing training program, contact me directly at Riley at DFISoCal.com. I'm Riley Schrader. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video with Defensive Firearms Instruction.